If you're wondering right now, what comes after the destruction of Roe v. Wade? Well, insert a right. Because according to Clarence Thomas and conservatives like him, there's a whole lot of other things that they would love to take away. Rights that many Americans have had for years, possibly decades. He wrote, in fact, in the decision released today, I join the opinion of the court because it correctly holds that there is no constitutional right to abortion. Respondents invoke one source for that right, the 14th 14th amendments guarantee that no state shall deprive any person of life, liberty or property without due process of law. That's the due process clause that he talks about. Well, that's just his jumping off point. Well, where does he go from there? He says, the court well explains why under our substantive due process precedents, the purported right to abortion is not a form of liberty protected by the due process clause. Such a right is neither deeply rooted in this nation's history and tradition, nor implicit in the concept of ordered liberty. And if that can go out the door with this new view of how liberty is supposed to work, what else could? Well, in future cases, he says, we should reconsider all of this court's substantive due process precedents, including Griswold, Lawrence, and Obergefell. Because our substantive due process decision is demonstrably erroneous, we have a duty to correct the error established in those precedents. So he's listing a bunch of those things. Maybe you're aware of those court cases and the rights that they concerned. Maybe you aren't, but just in case, it's small things like whether you have a right to purchase and use contraception, like at all, in any cases, all birth control, condoms, IUDs, all sorts of things. Can you actually get those or should those be barred by law? Should you be locked up if you tried to buy or use those? How about sodomy laws? Uh, same sex uh, sexual activity uh, was illegal in many states up until, I don't know, like after Seinfeld concluded. Very recent history. They'd like to go right back to that. Uh, what about the ability of gay couples to marry? Significant things like that. No, they'd like to literally break apart millions and millions of marriages. And they're just getting started. This is what Clarence Thomas had off the top of his head while opining about a separate case. Imagine once the Heritage Foundation and all sorts of Republican senators and pundits really get revved up for the next battles. What is this gonna look like, Kyla? What do you think? First of all, I just want to highlight the conservative contradiction to this, um, you know, recent uh, court hearing and all the things that are going to be taken away from us in the future. How is this promoting freedom? How, please, when you strip away rights from people, like it can only get worse. And I want everyone to be paying attention to this moment right now. I also want everyone to understand that young people, like the media always has to call us apathetic, that we don't pay attention. We are extremely involved in this right now. Um, Y'all know that I work for Unpack, a youth organization. I talked to several young people today who are tapped into this moment. We are not willing and we are not ready to let our features slip through our fingers. And so you you can bet we're gonna be fighting like hell to in order to make sure that our rights are protected. And it's just, again, it's a contradiction to say that sit here and take all these rights away and promote freedom. I, I'm like really sick of it. And also Thomas, you wanna talk about picking people's freedoms away. Let's talk about people who are actually breaking the, the law like your wife. That's a good point. Uh, there's definitely some uh, glass houses there. Um, Farron, I'm curious about what you think about this, but but also uh, in the decision, people like Alito and Kavanaugh are like, well, I mean, we're not Thomas. We're not coming for those things. Those are settled law. Why would you worry about us coming for those? Does that reassure you? Oh, absolutely not. It's it's the meme like, oh, I never thought the leopards would eat my face, said the person who voted for the leopards eating people's faces party. <laughs> Look, so here's what we gotta do, because we obviously know now Clarence Thomas made it very clear they're coming for the rest of our rights. And as soon as he can think of more, more he's gonna add those to the list as well. All right. Fight fire with fire, right here, right now, this is what we have to do. One, we gotta kill the filibuster so we can expand the Supreme Court, easier said than done. But if legal precedent no longer matters at the US Supreme Court, then fantastic. Let's get busy working on ways to overturn Citizens United, McCutcheon, Heller, all of these other horrendous decisions, let's do what they're doing. And I hope the Democrats understand that in order to do that, you're gonna have to borrow a couple of pages from the Republican Party's playbook. Mm -hmm. Why was this even at the Supreme Court to begin with? 
because Republicans at the state level passed this law that they knew would get challenged in court so that they could send it all the way up to the Supreme Court. Democrats need to do that. You've got to get a blue state somewhere to say, okay, fine. Corporate money is officially banned in this state from our politics. Then the second one of those little right wingers sues to overturn that, that's when the ball goes in motion. But it doesn't mean anything if you send it to this court. It has to go to a court that has 30 freaking judges on it. I don't even care how many, but that's what we have to do. And we have to fight fire. We have to play their game by their rules or we're gonna continue to lose. Yeah, well, look, Kyla, we, we were talking in the first segment about, you know, there's a lot of blame to go around for how this happened. I mean, this is a legal effort that's been going on for literally decades. It's ramped up recently. Um, but I know, I know that Twitter is not the real world. I'll acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. um, but I've seen on Twitter any number of people who, uh, despite the inability and unwillingness of the Democrats who've been in power for a little bit of time and they control, you know, both chambers of Congress and the, the White House, they didn't do anything to stop this from happening. They didn't do it before the leak, they didn't do it after the leak. Those people, their faith in the centrist Democrats don't seem to have been shaken at all. They know who is to blame for this and you know who's to blame for this? Uh, Bernie voters from six years ago, that's who's to blame for this. And so it, it makes me, like I, I agree with everything Farron said about how we should fix this. And I know that we can do it, necess we don't necessarily need those people. But it is crazy that like they could still think that no, people like Biden, Pelosi, Cinema, those are the ones we need. We just need to, we have to have more faith Joe in them. Manchin. We have to love them harder. Joe Manchin, that's how we'll get mm -hmm. these rights back that have been stripped away. What do you think? It's it's absolutely false. And honestly, I just want people to stop putting their faith in these centrist Democrats. They've had numerous times to get this, this issue correct. First of all, they need to get on their bully pulpit and make sure that their party is in line. The fact that Manchin and Cinema, and especially Manchin, he has time and time again voted down issues. The woman um, healthcare bill, uh, healthcare act, protection act. He voted against that. That would have ensured that Roe v. Wade was codified in this country. Mm -hmm. He's voted against voting rights. He's voted against reforming the filibuster. So why do they time and time again keep putting their faith in people who have shown you that they are not interested in ensuring the rights of the people in this nation? It's ridiculous to me. Nancy Pelosi supported um, Coolers, who's a, a, a staunch anti um, uh, anti choice uh, Democrat. So it's, again, it's, it's it's confusing me that people are still putting their faith in these people when they have dropped the ball several times. Yeah, uh, Farron, how, how do we get through these? Like, they still think that like Hillary would have won if Bernie. Like, they still. How do we get through to these people? How do you like? They don't care about the facts. What do we do? Um, it has to hit home for them, and, and that unfortunately is the problem. You know, they can oh, they can stomp their feet and be oh, we're so mad about this ruling, but at the end of the day, a lot of these people are more of the you know, probably well off affluent liberals who are still mad at Bernie and still with her in their Twitter profiles. And they're not gonna be affected by any of this. Cuz a lot of these folks are also the people, you know, I'll put it this way, I'm down here in Florida. They're not my neighbors, mm -hmm. but you know, in the, the safe blue states, they, they can stomp their feet and be mad all they want. Cuz they know that it's probably not gonna hurt them as bad as it is, you know, the people down here in my neighborhood. Yeah. So it's easy for them to lose perspective on things like this when you are in that little cocoon of just other, you know, neoliberal brunch type people. And I hate to stereotype anybody, so I apologize for that. But we all know what I'm kind of talking about here. You know, these are the people who are super active on social media and down with Trump. Everything he did is bad, everything the Democrats do is good. No. You have to wake up, you have to see how this is affecting everybody else outside of your gated community. And until they do that, or until it affects them personally, they're gonna keep doing yeah. what they're doing. Yeah. And unfortunately, it's gonna take a lot to open their eyes. And the most you know, obvious part is it has to directly start impacting them for them to realize how bad it is out here for the rest of us. Yeah, I, I agree with your analysis. Um, the, the obvious one of the baked in difficulties here is that uh, this sort of issue, the, the banning of, of abortion, 
it, it hurts people with less economic means. It, it doesn't hurt every racial demographic equally. Like uh, it, it is so hard for it to be as real for some of these people that are sure they understand it. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.